And joining us now from Tel Aviv is BuzzFeed Middle East correspondent Shira Frankel. Thank you, Shira, for being with us. You know, for the first time, we're seeing new video released by Hamas showing one of their operations through a tunnel into Israel. What's Hamas hoping to gain by releasing this video? Well, for them, it's actually a public relations coup to be able to say not only did we manage to infiltrate Israel, but we managed to get video of it. We captured Israeli weapons. We attempted to ki kidnap an Israeli soldier. For them, this is their version of PR. Uh, we have to remember that Israelis have been releasing video from day one showing their operations and what they're doing in the Gaza Strip. Hamas is now responding with their own version of that. You know, there's this public relations war going on side by side with the real cruel, bloody war that we're seeing. Now, while Israel is being criticized for the mounting civilian casualties, including the death of two UN, uh, two UN schools, Israelis overwhelmingly support the initiative, according to one poll there. And I just want to show you the numbers. 87% support the military offensive. Does that line up with what you're hearing from residents there? Definitely. I mean, the Israelis I've spoken to, I've been hard-pressed to find an Israeli who isn't in favor of this offensive, and more to the point, isn't in favor of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu going even further than he's gone so far. Just uh, earlier today, I was speaking to Israelis who are down south in some of the areas that are uh, hardest hit by rockets, and they were saying they wanted to see Israeli troops reoccupy the Gaza Strip. They thought that was the only way forward. Now, what they're saying is actually being echoed by politicians. Politicians in Netanyahu's cabinet, who are further to the right than he is, are saying that they're going to press on Netanyahu to not end this war until he demilitarizes the Gaza Strip. That would, that would potentially take months, and Israel would be looking at a very long-term investment in Gaza. And Shira, because I want to kind of talk about the uh, reality behind these numbers and this uh, sentiment that you're describing. I mean, we're talking about uh, Israelis that have been living constantly on alert for thousands of rockets. Definitely, and these are Israelis that live in the periphery in towns that have often been neglected by the government. These, a lot of times, Israelis who can afford to move elsewhere do so. The Israelis who are left in those communities, the vast majority of them are Israelis who can't afford to, to move anywhere else. And for a very long time, they didn't have the benefit of Iron Dome. Uh, that's the anti-missile shield that's been protecting Israelis in Tel Aviv so that none of those rockets have actually fallen on Tel Aviv communities. The people down south say they've been neglected for too long, and they don't want to see Israel leave Gaza until they've uh, created some sort of lasting military game there. Yeah, and my question is, I mean, what do people want to see in Gaza, in Israel? I mean, how much more can they do without just leveling the entire area? That's a great question. Um, look, Israel has already gone farther in this military operation than they have in the last two, that being the one in 2012 and 2008. We're already seeing them strike targets deep in the heart of Gaza City, as you said, UN schools, other facilities, the homes of Hamas leaders have been hit. It's a, it's a great question. How much further can they go? Will they launch a ground operation that's not just on the peripheries that we see now of the Gaza Strip? Will they actually go forward and reoccupy the Gaza Strip? That's a question that I think everyone's ans asking themselves right now. BuzzFeed's Shira Frankel, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thanks. And we're expecting 